Hi, I'm Kelly. As a life coach, I've noticed that the work I do with people isn't about their relationships or their jobs. It isn't about their kids or even how to find a way to get all the laundry done. All the work we do together centers around finding the answer to one simple question. What does it mean to live a fulfilled life? Join me as I explore this question and more in conversation with others in the Fulfilling Life interviews with me, Kelly Dahl, as your host. Hello, it's Kelly, and I'm here today talking with Heather Day about what it means to live a fulfilled life. Hello, Heather. Hi, Kelly. It's so great to have you here. I'm so excited to talk with you about this topic which is huge and meaningful and juicy and and all sorts of things. I'm ready and excited to dive into it with you. So thank you so much for being here and taking time to talk with me. Can you first tell everybody a little bit about yourself and the work that you do? Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for asking the big questions, first and foremost, Kelly. It's so important that we have a dialogue around what does it mean to live a fulfilled life? Um, so, uh, my business is called Vital Being Wellness. I'm a holistic wellness coach and a yoga teacher, and I specifically work around um, stress and anxiety. I work with people to reduce the stress levels in their lives and help them really hone in on what it means to trust and relax and find ease and fulfillment in, in their lives in a world that pushes us to live a life at 110 miles an hour. Um, I also teach yoga both over uh, over the internet, which is kind of exciting, and I also teach yoga here in Missoula, Montana, where I live. Wonderful, wonderful. Great description of some really big and powerful work that you do. Um, and and it, it is also connected to how how people live a fulfilled life. Um, I see you focusing more on sort of the blocks that can get in the way of, of going towards fulfillment, which we'll get to um, a little bit into the interview. Um, so to start, I would love to hear from you what it means to live a fulfilled life and how you think about that big, huge question. Hmm. For me, some of the indicators that I am living a fulfilled life is when things feel like I'm in the flow, like I'm aligned and there is ease in my day, um, as opposed to those days where you feel like you're pushing and straining and fighting against, you know, against the world. Um, when, I, when I think about what living fulfilled means to me at this point in my life, obviously it means something very different to me now than, say, 10 years ago when I was um, defining fulfilled by kind of the general definition of success, thought it meant I needed to have money, I needed to have the perfect relationship, I needed to have an adorable little home and, you know, potentially 2.5 kids or 1.5 kids. But to me, that I, I, I have come to recognize that fulfillment is so far out of the box. Um, it means travel. It means it means following my heart and and listening to the things that feel good, doing the things that feel easy for who I am, and not easy in the sense of laziness or apathy, but easy in the sense of alignment because they're coming from my heart, they're not coming from my mind's definition of what I think I need in this life to be fulfilled. Wonderful. And I, I, I find myself when I'm talking about fulfillment and in these interviews, I find myself touching here a lot and the people I talk to touching here a lot and that, that fulfillment does come from here and it doesn't come from outside of you. It's not, like you said, it's not the cute house and the perfect relationship and the 2.75 kids or whatever the, the, <laughs> the number is today, right? Um, it, it comes from in here first. Um, and it's, it's what you carry with you always. 
and, and and that sense of ease too. I think you you pointed out ease isn't laziness. It's not um, it's not the easy that we think of. It's ease and not pushing and not straining to make something happen. It's still hard work, most <laughs> definitely, and it's sweat and tears and and all of those things. But it's yes. ease because it's us. Wonderful. So so what are some of the things that you do to live a fulfilled life? I know you recently um, did something very big on your journey towards fulfillment. So if you want to talk about that or just some of the more day-to-day -day things that you do to keep you on the path towards fulfillment here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. So, um, so I wanted to, I, I've taught yoga for a while, um, a number of years, but I've never been officially Yoga Alliance certified. So I've wanted to do that for eight years, and there's been always an excuse. Um, always, oh, well, it's not financially prudent decision to make right now, or, you know, I have other obligations that I really should attend to, and I, I delayed and I, I kind of stuffed that desire into the back corner for a, a number of years. Um, but over this past year, it, it, it got to a point where it was a, if not now, when type decision. It was a, this is my calling. This is my dharma. This is my path. Why won't I listen to that? And so I, um, I made the leap. I remember very distinctly sitting at the computer and hitting, okay, boop, deposit paid. <laughs> I'm going to Costa Rica for a month. And, um, and things started unfolding from there. It, it really kind of tipped the balance in terms of how I was listening to my intuition, how I was listening to that deepest truth without judgment anymore, without, um, is this a prudent decision? Is this going to make my parents proud? Is this um, normal and acceptable by the standards of the world we live in? People told me that it was really irresponsible um, to make that decision. To, to leave everything behind for a month and, and just kind of disappear. Um, but I knew that that felt right. Um, that, that was a big decision. That was a big decision uh, of living my fulfilled life. On the day-to-day -day basis, it's, it's giving my space, myself space to listen. I, I meditate in my own kind of um, special way. Sometimes that includes dancing. Sometimes that includes um, singing, mantra. I love to sing. But just giving myself space, dedicated space, to listen in and to check in um, without the distractions of the computer or the phone or um, other people being around. Uh, at, or to consider what they think I should be doing. It's, it's, it's listening. It's getting my mind out of the way and listening into what my heart really wants and what, what my heart would have me decide on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it changes yeah. every day, every moment. <laughs> and, Taking, taking the space and giving myself the flexibility, the gentleness to hear what that, that heart, touching here again, what that heart message um, is saying, how that heart message wants me to live. And sometimes that means living irreverently, you know, saying, well, society would have me do X, Y, or Z. That doesn't feel in alignment with who I am and how I want to live. So, you know, I'm not going to do that. I may be judged for that. I may be considered kind of left field out there for that. But that's, in the long run, that's fine by me, so long as I'm living what's real for me. 
matches. And so, how, how do you, how do you, how do you do that then? So that's it's e it's a very easy thing to say, right? <laughs> that that I'm listening to what my heart wants, and I'm going to make this big leap and push that button and send the deposit and spend the money and and take the time. And even just the day-to-day -day things that maybe, um, that not maybe for sure that the general population, the the society that we've grown up in, doesn't support. Um, it's it's easy to say, oh, I'm just going to do it anyway because it's my heart. But the truth is, we know that that's that's not an easy easy step to get through. Um, so I see that as possibly one of the obstacles that you've that you've worked on overcoming. Um, can you share with us how, how you do that? How do you practice that listening, that true listening, which is, which is easy to hear, sometimes easy to hear, yeah. um, and then even, even harder to, to act on? Mm -hmm. I think I've been, um, I, I now see it as being blessed by um, having the universe give me a good swift kick in the pants a couple times in my life. Mm -hmm. um, when I haven't been living in alignment with that truth, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we see it manifested in getting sick all the time mm -hmm. because, you know, we're just fighting and fighting and stressed and fighting. Um, and for me, that was part of it. I was, uh, I spent a winter just being sick and miserable the whole winter. And at some point going, okay, this isn't right. Yeah. This, this, this forcing, this pushing, this trying to make it work, this is apparently not working. Because I feel horrible all the time. I need to change something. Um, and that was when I started coaching. Yeah. Um, you know, regardless of the fact that my parents said, you're not going to be able to make any money doing that, you're not going to be able to support yourself doing that, you want to teach yoga, that's not a real job. Mm -hmm. um, the other piece, though, that I have been exploring and writing about and spent a lot of time um, meditating on and um, discussing with my colleagues while I was in Costa Rica is trust. Um, for me, the trust in this greater power, this greater plan that I don't necessarily always understand um, and can't always understand in the moment, kind of the cosmic humor of why things work out the way they do or don't work out the way they don't. Um, trusting that yes, I'm going to take this leap and go to Costa Rica. I don't have a place to live when I get back. Um, I'm going to ask my clients to very kindly take a month off and, and pick back up with me when I get back. It feels risky, but I trust. I trust that because this decision feels good, the universe, the greater spirit, this greater power than I, is going to see that and is going to take care of me mm -hmm. in whatever way that might happen. And that's often not the way that I you know, think it should happen or originally wanted it to happen or planned for it to happen. But it's kind of letting go of, okay, um, it, it will be what it will be is really liberating, really freeing and and it's what has gotten me through all these decisions uh, that have felt scary. Yeah, and 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 I hear you saying trust in in that voice that's telling you it's the right decision too, and and just a lot. I know for me, I, I find myself with some of the big decisions that I have made too. It's 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 gonna work out. It and just it it's it's this is right. It feels right deep within, and you can't always explain it in a way that everybody else understands, right? But but you know that it's it's going to be okay, and it's going to work out um, because that inner voice isn't wrong. Mm -hmm. 
you know, when, when you really are listening and you know and you can feel that this is, this is what needs to happen now. And it does take practice, I think, to be able to discern between the chatter of the ego mind, which says, which tries to drive us in one direction, which is often away from the direction of the heart, and that deeper, uh, more, more felt sense of, of what our heart and soul and spirit are in alignment. To do to make the decisions from those space because the ego mind is always going to yell louder, always. <laughs> yeah, and and discerning when it's 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 a bit it's big soul work decisions like going to, for a teacher training in Costa Rica versus you know these boots would really <laughs> make me so much happier. <laughs> <laughs> and knowing like yes. just not exactly the same voice that's calling to you. Right. So that, yeah. Again, that that careful listening and being open to listening and, and, and receiving the messages and discerning the messages too is is a big practice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But but leads towards big wonderful things. Um, so thinking, thinking a little bit more practically too. Be, I mean, the, the trusting your inner voice and the listening to your desires and and trusting that things will work out. Those are kind of big concepts, right? So mm-hmm. as those bumps come up in in smaller ways, maybe beside other than just like the pushing of the the send the deposit, right? That's a big mm-hmm. decision. So. We all have these everyday obstacles that keep us from staying on the path to fulfillment. What are some of the the pieces of your practice that keep you centered and aligned with with going towards fulfillment instead of going into that ego mind or the scatteredness or the whatever all of those things that come up? Yeah, yeah. Um. For me, as a, as a yoga practitioner, um, grounding myself in my body has always been really helpful for me. And so over time, practicing that awareness of knowing what it feels like, knowing kind of the start of the, the nervous system buzz, the like wind up of stress when you can feel your mind starting to go faster, faster, faster with, oh, but what if, what about um, recognizing that cultivating that meditative state is something that we can do all day when we catch our mind going to that place, when we catch the ego mind taking over, and we can say, oh, there you are, okay, I recognize, I'm going into an ego mind space. For me, if I find myself going to that space, it's pausing, taking a deep breath and going, okay, I see where I was going, let's return to where I am. Let's return into my body. Let's return into this present moment. And let's let that go. Because, who boy, I know what that's like, and I don't want to go there. So um, simple, really, just to, to get back in touch and to feel it. Even when you speak, I can feel that feeling in my body, even when you're describing the, the stressed and the anxious. I start to feel that sort of tingly feeling in my own body. And even being able to check into that and notice that that's happening, so then it can shift to another state of being that brings the calm back in. Mm-hmm. Um, I also do a ton of journaling. I know it's so, like, cliche and over-prescribed, right? But for me, that sort of expression, that sort of um, outlet, that exercise in just allowing my my desires, my desired feelings towards fulfillment come out on paper and seeing them, being able to go back and read them, um, and being able to touch in on, okay, yeah, that is the feeling that I desire. Am I living in alignment with that right now? Okay, yeah, I am. It um, has been incredibly helpful. I love writing I deserve entries. Mm-hmm. Um, starting with the prompt of I deserve and going from there. And I'm trying to steer clear of I deserve those really cool boots that I'm going to make me. 
more of, you know, I deserve um, to feel supported as a yoga teacher by a, a strong yoga community, things like that. I love, I love that. That's great. That's a great prompt. And I, I think journaling is overprescribed, and it's definitely not for everybody. But it's a tool that I have used all my life. It really feels like um, that process of writing for me really helps things get worked out through the pen and the writing, and 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 seeing things differently, and not always looking back. Um, at what was even written, but just the process of, of working through things in that way. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, if, if writing is not for you, um, like I mentioned earlier, I love to dance and I love to sing because I feel like all of those exercises are places where I can let go of that mind chatter and just really be in touch with the energy of whatever is going on in my body and my heart at that moment. Um, you know, if I can let go of how my mind thinks I should look while I dance or uh, how I should look or should sound while I sing, I've transcended that that ego place, that fear, mm-hmm. the, the judgment um, about how things should be, how my life should be, um, into how it is in that moment. In that moment, I am dancing. In that moment, I am writing in my journal. In that moment, I'm singing. And... That's where I am. Yeah. And, you know, as you're talking, just that, that, that your name of vital being came forward to me. And that really, that really is it. You know, being, being in that moment, being in the moment of where you are and feeling who you are and that the, the vitality of you as a person, um, (laughs) being a wonderful check-in point and so grounding um, to come back to. It's really, really beautiful. There are so many self-help books, self-help podcasts, self-help movies that give us 7,000 paths to fulfillment. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to think that it's complicated. We need to read all of them and we need to, you know, practice this type of meditation and this type of yoga and this type of consciousness, whatever. Um, But really, for me, what I have found is when I get all of those shoulds out of the way and I tune back in with that simplicity Mm -hmm. of where am I now? Mm -hmm. What am I feeling now? In that perfectly simple moment that's the totality. That's fulfillment. Is letting go of all those things that I think I should be doing, all those judgments about myself because I haven't been doing them. That's freedom. That's fulfillment. That's that's the answer we all think we're gonna find in a self help book. Yeah, yeah. It's so 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 true. Um, and no- knowing what that answer is for each of us um, and, and being okay with whatever that answer is. And that's the hard part. Yeah. That's really the hard part. It's easy to talk about trust. It's easy to talk about letting go and, and surrendering and all those sorts of things, but it's, it's that, that piece of when you see yourself fully, are you okay with what's there? Can you love what's there? Can you not judge what's there? Heather, it has been such a pleasure to talk to you today. I feel calmer just talking to you, um, wow. and and it's it's really been it's really been wonderful to sit and chat with you for a while today. And I know that that everybody will get that beautiful, calm, and grounding feeling from listening to what you have shared with us. Can you please tell everybody where they can find you online? Absolutely, you can find me at www.vitalbeingwellnessalloneword.com You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter. I have links on my website for that. All right, and I'll, I will have all the links 
in the post as well so people can click on over and, and read more about your work. Thank you again for being here and taking the time and, and sharing your insights with all of us. Thank you so much, Kelly, and thank you for the work that you're doing to explore fulfillment and this, this beautiful thing doing. Thank you.